New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Yo, it's been four hours I've been in your yard and I have not seen you again. All right, Tyrese, hang on a second. Laura <laughs> Styles, Rosenberg, give it up for the bro Tyrese on the program. Yeah. Ebro in the Morning. We're talking about Gibby Hanna. No, Gipsy, Gibsy Hanna. Gibsy Hanna. We, been, oh, we were lied to. Together. I apologize. I misrepresented the brand. It's Gibsy Hunt. So you've been to Tyrese's backyard parties. Yes. Yes. It was and lit. where there is an actual mini Benny Hanna installment. Hold on, get this. Not only is there a Benny Hanna, a Gibsy Hanna, if you will, but it's so popping, it was too crowded for me to get a table. I couldn't get a seat. <laughs> You invite me and I don't get a seat. Oh, like it's too crowded. There are people yeah. waiting online. It's crazy. So, uh, how often do these fest these things part? You know, take I don't place? I don't do them as often as I used to, man. Uh, because it's it, it it's it's a little crazy. Um, I was just on the phone with with my dude Percy, who's been you know best homies with with uh, with the king of the coast, Snoop Dogg, and he's like, "Yo, man, at this point." you probably could put the word out about your parties like a half a day before it start cracking. Because if you give folks three, four days notice... It's too much. It's too much. I mean, I've had like 1,400 people in my backyard at one time. <gasps> How many people were there when you were there? I would say if it felt like close to 1,000. Yeah, it, it, was, it was, I mean, it was throughout the night because it was so, the yard's long. Right. So like you can like wrap around. It was a fight night. It was a Mayweather night. And it was, it was a freaking oh, That was zoo. light. That was a light night. <laughs> I've seen him. Gave love. Didn't see him for like four yeah. hours. I got a tour though. You had just set up the studio. He had just set up, he had, a, he has a like meeting room. He has like a room for like important business meetings. Many leather chairs. Many. For, <laughs> for important so people like, to sit and talk. Important money people. It's like chairs. Justice League. Yes, like, it's like the Justice League. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then he comes in on like the intercom on a big TV <laughs> yeah. from the other side of the house. Look, Tyrese, you're here uh, joining us today because you have a, a film coming out that yes, is, um, you know, uh, dealing with police corruption. Yes. Now, which we are seeing play out in society uh, the Dallas shooting, first, the first Dallas shooting, yeah. uh, the murder of uh, Botham uh, John, which the woman walked into the wrong apartment. She's doing some time, but come to find out the guy that was the main witness turns up dead, right? And then they yeah. try to bend, pin it on four dudes selling weed that drove from New Orleans oh, to Dallas story. for some weed. Yeah, crazy. Ridiculous That's story. crazy. Then, not too long after that, a Fort Worth incident where a woman's in her house playing video games, um, all captured on the body cam. All captured mm -hmm. on the body cam, and within less than, what, four seconds, he shoots through the window, killing a woman in front of her nephew. But these are the most recent incidents. Mm -hmm. You're from Watts, California. Mm -hmm. So um, how much of this stuff being on social media all the time, because a lot of people don't understand the, the community versus the police that's been going on in California and around the nation, but California... Yeah. If you grew up in California, you were dealing with a level of of, of whether it was uh, activists versus the police mm -hmm. prior to the uh, Rodney King verdict. Biggie Smalls, right? Um, there's just a lot of that that's been going Grand on. Grand Park right? Division, Rodney King, yep, Nipsey Hussle, yep. We feeling everything. So but look, first, first, I want to say I am uh, moved to the core for being here. Um, I just want to remind you, Ebro. Uh, of how much you mean to the culture. I want to thank y'all for not being another radio station with this platform that's out here just playing music and, and not addressing what's really going on out here and what we live in and feeling every day. It's very vulnerable being black in America right now. And, um, you know, I piss people all the time, piss people off all the time because I speak to the stuff that matters. I speak to the stuff that lives. I think right now we're we're getting a little desensitized uh, because so much crazy stuff is coming across our timeline every day. It's like one is trumping, you know, pun intended. It's it's going up and up every single day, and I'm I'm concerned that we're getting into this space that feels like, man, you know, it's crazy to see what they are dealing with, and it's that you know, it's like, well, because. Cancer is not in your house. I don't care for it because human and sex trafficking is not in your house I don't care for it because your kids or grandkids is not sleeping and piss and shit and 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 at the border I don't care about it um, So going back to what you said a second ago 
um, I grew up in Watts, born and raised in Watts. I was born in Martin Luther King Hospital, and I found out later that the reason they named it Martin Luther King Hospital is because Dr. Martin Luther King was in Watts in 1965 for the Watts riots. Whenever you see these clips about the police dogs and fighting and, and police swinging and beating the people that's up against the wall and the water hoses, all that was in my city that I was born and raised in. And the president at the time called Dr. King and flew him from Atlanta to Watts because of the Watts rebellion of police corruption, racism, bigotry, excessive force, and murder killing us like flies, and we got so fed up, we started burning shit down. And that's, that's I was born into that. It happened before me, obviously, but I, that's the city I Your grew up in. Your mom was there. Your yeah, mom moms yeah. was definitely there. Yeah. Um, so I carry a different torch. That's why this black and blue movie for me means it ain't a movie. Um, this is this is a movement. This is a statement. This is an event. This is this is for the people who may have decided that I ain't I ain't living that, so that don't matter. That's gonna give them a seat at the table to see some real shit. And also in the trailer, from what I can tell, I haven't seen the yeah. film. It's a black woman who's a cop. Yes. Who sees some foul shit going on? Captures it on her body cam. Captures it, and then they're trying to. And I don't want to. I mean, it's yeah. in the trailer. Yeah. The police are trying to kill another police officer who happens to be a black woman who, who I'm assuming joined the force because she wanted to make a difference, which right. is a lot of reasons why people become police officers, especially right. from the communities that right. they serve. Right. She's from New Orleans. Time. Yeah. She be she does two tours in Afghanistan. Her mom's passed away from New Orleans. She comes home. She decides to become a police officer. She wants to make a difference. Make a difference. Captures four black boys being murdered from her police squad on camera. Her mind says, I want to do the right thing. I want to speak out. I see something. I want to say something, which is the difference. A lot of people don't know this because, you know, I'm, I'm a real nigga from the hood, man. I'm like, you, you, you do know the difference between snitching and being a whistleblower, right? right. Not people, a lot of people do. People yeah, ain't they, out they, here. They blend it all up. Tattletelling, snitching. No, no, no. Takashi 69 is snitching. He was in some shit he wasn't supposed to be in. He's pitching and selling niggas on this life and lifestyle that that's that's not him. He goes down and he's taking everybody down with him. That's snitching. If you in it, then you need to know what the fuck you signing up for. Whistleblowing is I'm a man or woman of integrity. I take an oath. My salary is taxpayers' dollars. I'm a man or woman of service to the community. I'm going to see something. I'm going to say something. And in my mind, when I think about Eric Garner, roll the tape. That man is being choked. There's one man that gets reprimanded for the excessive force, but there was 15 officers standing there to witness the same choking. They got footage on their body cam that we've never seen. They never said shit. Well, honestly, I don't even think we had... They didn't have body cams at that time, did they? Yeah. They did. Yeah, no, they didn't. No body cam footage was ever turned in, and none of the police officers who witnessed the same choking ever went public and said, yo, this is what I've seen. And it's wrong. It's wrong. Well, it, and that's been one of the biggest issues from the very... Of the last several years of this movement talking about police brutality, one of my biggest frustrations is this blue wall of silence where right. the police don't want to step up. And in New York, the big issue is I can't speak to other cities here... It's the Police Benevolence Association. It's the, the union. union. The police union. They refuse to ever acknowledge mistakes. They're just always fighting against it. Now, in the NYPD... Um, well, it's the same what's the, thing what's we the got in name? L.A. Um, yeah. the, the, um, the guy who did Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment. The oh, Edwin. Edwin. Edwin, Edwin Raymond. Ed, Edwin Raymond, yeah. who did... You know, on his NYPD 12, and it's 12 officers who came together to talk about what's going on, put out a documentary, won some awards for the documentary. So every police department has um, issues. Luckily, locally, we've had some police officers who are the good guys who are saying, no, 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 
there's foul things happening, mm -hmm. and it's going to be addressed. Even upwards of the chief of police who's new, arresting individuals for corruption. We've had a lot of those things play out here but locally. But that's, that's exactly what the Black and Blue movie is about. Mm. It takes you in that place. The crazy thing is, yesterday I, I did this interview, and this woman said, uh, she said, from the moment that the movie starts, <laughs> you on the edge of your seat. It takes you in. And it's like, and it you, it never lets up. Like they they these officers in this movie are on a mission. They using walkie talkie. They going so crazy trying to kill this woman who's got footage. Trying to kill this police officer who got footage on her body cam. This movie means so much to the culture. It 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 speaks to what we live every day. And she says she needed thirty minutes after the movie went off to sit in her chair and just breathe before she can go to her car. And then I said to her, well, welcome. Uh, this is what it feels like to be black in America. Now, This was a white woman who just, it's like, yeah, you, you don't live this every day. You don't know what it's like. She's like, well, you know, at a certain point, because they like to downplay it, the whole shit. You know, at a certain point, right, right, you're able to kind of get away from that, you know, feeling. You're successful. You're black. People know who you are. You may get pulled over. They'll say, oh, Tyrese, and then let you go, right? I said, no, no, no. What you don't understand is that if I get pulled over, you hoping that they don't start shooting before they even get up to even recognize who I am to potentially give me a pass. And I said, if it's about being rich and famous, where's Biggie Smalls? If it's about being a millionaire, selling records, and being this... Big deals. Where's Biggie? How is his mom to this day? It doesn't even seem like they're intending to bring anyone to justice. There's been documentaries after documentaries that say that the police was involved and in some allegedly involved in, in orchestrating the death of Biggie. Where we at? Right. Rodney think, King, the Rodney King beating, which happens to be one of the most famous beatings, police brutality in the history of beatings, wasn't even captured on the body cam. That was somebody who rolled out of bed with a camcorder and said, what the fuck, and started filming, right. sent the VHS tape to the news, and then they went on the air. This was prior to social media. Mm -hmm. There was no body cam footage. There was no cameras on the corner. There was no... GoPro. Right, right, right. <laughs> and the only reason it got attention. Because if nobody filmed it, nobody would have Think cared. about how many were not filmed. Yes. Hundreds what? and thousands. And well, that was the you know, one of the how great many things. Beatings one of the great things about rap every, music yeah. is the fact that rap music, whether it was Public Enemy or NWA or you know, KRS one and these, you know, late eighties cats who put it on display was the fact that these things were now talked about. And 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 for you know, I'm old enough to remember when society was like, ah, oh, that's not happening. Come on. Yeah. And even to this day, right, people try to downplay how much police corruption and police abuse of power takes yeah. place out there. Well, it's, it's, you know, I do want to say this because this is a very big stage and, and microphone and platform. It's irresponsible um, to say that all police officers are bad. Um, I think they, they deal with kind of this uh, aggressive... Uh, nature of being painted to be this monster like they're the monsters of our society Police officers have helped everybody in this room in some capacity. They've actually done their job They've they've kept me safe and other people safe and and it's unfair to say that all police officers are bad It's also say that every it's bad to say that every black man is bad or we have malicious intent like I I want to go home to my kids, too I, I play with my daughter, my daughters every day, every night. I, I want to be there to, to blow out candles for my daughter's birthday too. Um, you know, but for the, for the police officers that have these malicious intent, that wake up every day and, and they're being reprimanded at a certain point, the question is, how much shit have you done before you got to the Eric Garner? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before you got to Tamir Rice, before you got to the Leticia Jefferson in Dallas, what have you done prior to it? And let's 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 talk some real shit. How many Ku Klux Klan members are, are, are part of the Aryan Nation that are neo Nazis 
that are actual police officers. Well, like and, you've and, made and it clear, the, you don't fuck with black people, you don't fuck you with Jews, you don't like you that, don't yeah. fuck with immigrants, you don't fuck with nothing it's that has to life, do with right. inclusion. That's who you are. So then, as long as you keep it down and you get through getting a gun and a badge, now you're a police officer see, representing those intentions. Up was the culture of policing, right? right. Where, you know, as, as I've gotten older, I've learned about the culture of policing. And what you just spoke about was keeping people in their place, right? And making people feel afraid to be free in a nation that marketed freedom. And so now you have people who are constantly traumatized, constantly in fear. Mm -hmm. And there are there is a culture of policing that wanted that. They want people to be afraid of the badge. They want people to be afraid of the uniform because that's the power that they feel like they can keep everybody in their place in law and order mm -hmm. type of behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's the culture that, if anything, when we're talking about the abuse of power, that's the shift that I think most people want. Think most that, people want to feel not afraid of police officers, and they also want to know for a fact, if we live in a trauma, a, a, a neighborhood where people are traumatized because of mental health conditions, mm -hmm. joblessness, alcoholism, drugs, gun violence, et cetera, et cetera, the police going into those neighborhoods mm -hmm. are also dealing with some trauma and some mental health disorders 100%. as well. 100%. And, and lumping everybody that lives in these neighborhoods into the same mm -hmm. A uh, uh, pie, yeah. right? And, and assuming that just because I live in a neighborhood, I agree with criminals. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's the cultural shift and the cultural understanding that we yeah. need to well, try it, to... It goes back to something that I say often. When is the last time you prayed for your pastor? When is the last time you asked your doctor, is he okay? As much as we focused on being on the receiving end of corruption, beat down traumas and dramas that come with living and trying to stay afloat mentally, psychologically, emotionally, living in poverty, living in the hood. You know, it's like, dude, I just witnessed a murder. I'm 15. You want me to focus on algebra? The fuck are you talking about? Like, like if you if you dealing with something traumatic and you come, you got insurance, you your mama got money and you live in the suburbs or in the valley, you could afford mental health. You could afford having a therapist to sit across from you to peel through what you're actually dealing with. Um, I know everyone is on the mental health thing, but I, I want to be very clear and very specific. There is some shit that you are still trying to survive that's bigger than a blunt, that's bigger than you know, sipping Ciroc or, or or being in the hood just like rolling a blunt and just speaking with your nigga like, yo, nigga, boo, boo, boo. There are real things that you are carrying and trauma that you are still processing from divorces to mental, emotional, psychological, and physical abuse, molestation, rape. There's real shit that you are still dealing with and carrying. It doesn't matter what you driving. You know, listen... Some people uh, that, I mean, I've, I've been broke and fucked up my whole life before I got on, and you would assume, you know, all I got to do is get some money and everything that I'm carrying is going to go away. Well, where is Robin Williams? Where, where, is, where is Kate Spade? Anthony Bourdain. Where is Anthony Bourdain? This man is traveling the world in the Dave Chappelle special. Where he started it's... it off talking about... This is real shit. You would assume that you're gonna be okay as long as the Rolls Royce pops up, as long as the mansion is there, as long as you get out of the hood and you leave. No, these people are multi-millionaires with beyond successful and profitable businesses, companies, brands, celebrity status, everything that you are not, and they still killed themselves. So I wanna use this platform to say, go get some help. Like, I'm in therapy right now, still trying to get through what my last year and a half. It takes a lot to be in this room right now with cameras on me when I got videos on the Internet with me crying. I mean, videos uploaded that I didn't even know I uploaded because I was on psych meds. You know, like real shit. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. <clears throat> now we see you in a, in a very, um, I want to say, 
you're very emotional publicly, yeah. right? Since the the crime video where you were crying about your daughter, yeah. right? Like that was a which at the time I was like, yo, I didn't know why he went to social media. Maybe he just felt like he didn't have anywhere else Did, to go. At had the time. no idea that the video was ever recorded, uploaded. I knew nothing. And I so had you no were prescribed medication. Even, even after it was probably a little, maybe at least a month, a month and a half before the psych meds literally was out of my system before I realized, oh shit, you said Will Smith is gonna give you five million. You got a video on the internet crime. I had no idea. You had no recollection of it even happening. I had no idea. And how did they, how did you become medicated? I, I became medicated because of the accusations that I was dealing with from my ex and because I was losing sleep naturally. Like you took my daughter for a hundred days I'm dealing with the accusation, so I went to therapy. And I was with a psychiatrist, and they was like, yo, your mood is all over the place. You probably need something to stabilize your mood. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do nothing ever. I don't drink white, red wine, so I'm clean. You put something in my system, it's gonna have the mm -hmm. most extreme effects. And that's what happened. And so mm -hmm. now that you're unpacking it with a therapist, because I, you know, obviously I, I know about your childhood story and the trauma, even trauma from then. Yeah. So hearing you say right now, you, you, you got put on. You got millions. I got a house. I got all these things working out for me, and now I'm dealing with this with my daughter's mother. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's was been it, it's was, been 12 years of baby mama drama for me. It just never got to that level. Mm. So when you unpack it now, does all of your, I guess, inability to kind of. A uh, uh, process and and level emotions during this time. Does that even go back to some of the trauma of being a child? Also, well, you know, it it takes me back to the reason I don't drink and smoke, which is I've said some shit and done some like we all have that's been controversial. Take over your timeline, like ah, what the fuck was I doing? What did I say? What did I? And then you 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 kind of, you know, we're growing up with the whole world watching. You know, it's it's. Um, so the reason I don't drink and I don't smoke because my, my father was a crackhead, an alcoholic. My mom was an alcoholic for 27 years and been sober by the grace of God almost 13 years now. Um, but I had to cut her off for a year and a half and literally not call her. Mm -hmm. And when we finally got back in touch, she was finally ready to listen to what I had to say because I realized that I was a crutch. I was helping her with her sickness from funding her sickness. Mm. Um, enabler. I was an enabler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so people would say, well, why don't you drink and why don't you smoke? Because I'm a control freak. And I want to be in control of what I say and what I do at all times. So to wake up on September 11th to accusations of abuse to my daughter, who was like my dream, my... I spanked my daughter with my right hand <laughs> on her butt second time in 12 years and it happened so my therapist said we need to stabilize your mood because you're barely sleeping you got accusations you got all this stuff going on so it 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 was crazy um to have all of that to play out and I just want to say where it's needed I apologize to my fans, people that love me, people that care for me, because even prior to the psych meds, my timeline was off the hook. I'm going at my baby mama, I'm this, I'm that, because I'm just swimming in it, and I'm trying to figure out a way to give people an alternate story, to give people the other version of what this all looks like, to give them the option to say, you know what, thank you for clarifying this, this shit looks crazy, I'm rolling with what you say. You were looking for support. I was looking for support because I'm like, this shit is all playing out in real time. Um, but ultimately, it goes back to us growing up and having people all the way in your life um, through the highs, through the lows. And Bishop T.D. Jakes, which I just want to say before this ends, it just hit me. I've never done this before. I want to end this interview with a prayer, if y'all don't mind, mm -hmm. for the people that's dealing with mental health mental health and real stuff um, that may not be on people's timelines. 
Um, and I just want to I want to get into that prayer. But Bishop T.D. Jakes said that we live in a world where people are able to cut and paste their life on their timelines and paint their picture. Right. We all want to congratulate the celebrities that get married, but we have no idea how miserable they really are because they're able to cut and paste and serve up whatever version of their life they want us to know about. Right. But real shit is actually happening at the house. Me and you was just texting mm -hmm. the other day and going back and forth about something that's really yeah, going well, my daughter, on with my daughter's you. grandmother, yeah. Right, right. So it's, 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 I just pray and I hope that, that people are able to say, you know, rather y'all go see my movie this weekend and not. I want people to really understand the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. God just needs permission to come into your thing and help you to figure it all out. There is no handsome, there is no money, there is no car in my driveway, there is no size of my house, there is no robot in my living room that could have stopped the beatdown from happening on full display. I got to a place. You're talking about on social media. Everything that I was dealing with right. that played out for the world to see. It got so crazy. I, I literally, if you can think of someone who passes out, I didn't pass out, but if you can think of somebody who passes out in, in the gym and they're like this, I got to a place where everything that I could think of doing to try and flip it, twist it, stop it, turn it around, nothing could stop it. When it's back to back to back to back, you just get to a place where you just wipe out, you get depleted, and you just surrender. I had to submit and recommit my life to God on levels that was never in place before that. Was your wife, because your, 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 you recently got married? Really? I had just recently got yeah. married. I gave my wife every reason in the world to leave me. My wife staying down with me says that when she committed through thick and thin to death do us apart, she meant it with every fiber in her body. She wasn't with me for seven years, ten years, to say, you know, we just going through a rough patch right now. I'm going to hawk it out. <laughs> I do. Six, seven months beat down, mm -hmm. which is a whole other story because mm -hmm. the question is, did you really want to accuse him of that? Or are you really feeling a way about the fact that he's not only married but happily married and have actually moved on? And had another kid. But mm -hmm. another kid, another life, just kind of... So let me figure out a way to take over the energy of his house while he's trying to. But that's a whole nother conversation. And married folks with kids, with exes can relate to that piece. But I want to I wanna end this with a prayer because I got to go do one thing before I leave New York. Um, if y'all don't mind. Reverend Tyrese Gibson. Give it up for him, Reverend Tyrese, Reverend Tyrese Gibson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with the prayer this uh, morning. I just want to give y'all a prayer. Um, Father God, there are some real things going on in this world. Um, we are so focused on what we end up finding out about. But there are secretly so many people in this world, in this country, that's dealing with real traumas. That grandmother, that grandfather, that nephew, that little girl, that little boy that have lost it. And in the presence of Hot 97, while the whole world is listening, I know we're supposed to be playing music and talking about stir turned up this and that, this summer jam. But Father God... I, I just ask that you invade the mental, emotional, spiritual, and psychiatric traumas that people are dealing with. I ask, Father God, that you stop the gun, stop the trigger, stop the hanging, stop the decisions that they are psyching themselves up to make that's tied into what they're carrying every day. Father God, heal it, embrace it, step into it, stop the season, for whatever reason, my traumas played out in full view. But for whatever reason, if someone got permission to live through my traumas because I'm on the other side and you, you use me as that beacon of light, you gave people permission to hold on and not quit and not give up because you were able to show that through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can get us all to the other side. Get in there. Embrace it. Fight it. Stop them from making that decision. Heal them financially. Heal the marriage. Right now we are in a generation where getting a divorce is more popular 
and seems to be more celebrated than for the people that are actually married and happy and in a functioning marriage and relationship. Embrace the family. Our families are under attack. Our health, everything is under attack. We need you, Father God, more than we have ever needed you right now. And I just ask that you step in. In Jesus' name, amen. Get that man. Amen. 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 Tyrese. Go see Black and Blue, y'all. Reverend Tyrese Gibson. Reverend Tyrese. Go see he Black and Blue. That was I good. Love that. that was good. Give Black you, man. and Blue. We need y'all to go support this yeah, movie this weekend. So we didn't even get to talk about how the fact that, you know, uh, Ludacris, Tyrese. We was just debating Ludacris and Tyrese. I mean, uh, Ludacris and Cardi B. We didn't even get to that. We got, we got into important things. We didn't get to I, don't, I don't really either. know if you can even follow anything yeah, with what just prayer, happened. Man, that over. was the yeah, kapoo poo. Oh. That yeah, was the you know what I'm just I appreciate what you're Go to see do. Black and Blue. We need y'all to show up for the culture, man. We need y'all. Appreciate you.